today we're presenting on how to run OctoPrint and a few things of my experience while I was playing with a 3D printer. So now, once you buy it, you know you go through a process of why did I do this? Why did I spend a thousand dollars? And then, um, yeah, this this is the first thing to start off with. And the box arrives like five weeks later because uh, the original was I came out to as a queue for like five weeks or six weeks. So step one, now you build it. Boom, that's actually the easy part, even though it took you like you know, 15 hours and two continuous days of doing random shit. Next thing to do is to try to print something. Uh, first thing you realize, uh, you're tethering your computer to the printer for like, you know, six, seven hours is extremely dumb. And second thing is, your MacBook Pro only has four type C ports and there's no full size SD card port, so how are you going to transfer your SDR files? So you give up and you print the included Benchy that comes in the SD card from the factory. <laughs> So yay, it looks yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing. Um, now you get really hyped, and you're like, okay, let's print more useful things. And you realize you still don't have an SD card reader. So now you're sad, but you refuse to be defeated. Um, if you don't know what Maker Force is, um, it's like a group of kids from NUS High School. Our motto is, use what we have to get what we don't. So what do we have? We have a Raspberry Pi 2 Mono B. We have a micro SD card and a card reader in, in, in the Raspberry Pi 2 and also for our computer. And we have a Logitech C170. And what we do not have, we don't have a full-sized SD card reader. Hashtag longer life. So what you do now is I found this thing called Octoprint. And Octoprint is um, uh, it runs on a Raspberry Pi and it allows you to control your 3D printer either over your local network or with a bit of configuration remotely. And this is what the creator of Octoprint describes it as, the snappy web interface for your 3D printer. So installing it is as easy as installing any other Raspbian OS. Um, you essentially just download the image file from the website, and then um, you flash it either with Etcher or Win32 this imager. And then you have to either use Ethernet directly to your local network, or you set up Wi-Fi by editing um, this file, which is in, 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 in your SD card when you flash it. And after that, you can just insert your SD card, and you head to occupy.local on the local network, or your IP address, of your Raspberry Pi, and then you should see this interface pop up. Uh, this interface is actually pretty nice. Uh, you get your essential stuff like temperature control, how, it even allows you to view your G code in live so that you can see your head move around the printer in real time. Uh, it also gives you things like terminal access to your Raspberry Pi, allows you to manually control it, and it has a web chemistry. And yeah. So essentially, to test it out, what you do is you connect your Raspberry Pi to the computer, to the, to the 3D printer, you turn everything on, you plug in an Ethernet cable or use your Wi-Fi card and then this should pop up on your local network. Okay, now it works. So let's take it a step further and try to you know, let, allow remote access. And that's a bit tricky because you don't, this thing has no sort of authentication other than the login button. And even if you don't log in, you can still view the, the webcam footage into my room. So that's not preferable to expose to the, the, inter, the internet. So what you do is, you add remote access by configuring a proper reverse proxy. <coughs> so the link is here, but Octoprint essentially uses this thing called HAP proxy, and um, this link sends you to a, a GitHub page which gives you the config file that allows you to you know, set up um, proper authentication using uh, HTTPS and stuff like that, so that when you go to the website, they'll ask you for your username and password without even letting you see um, what you see here. So it'll be like a window that pops up. And in that, you, enter your, you, you configure it in the config file. And then to configure your proper remote access, you first have to set up the static IP address for your Raspberry Pi, because if your I, Raspberry Pi is on dynamic IP, then there's a chance that every time it reboots, your IP address will change with your local network, and you can't set up port forwarding properly. And for those who don't know what port forwarding is, is essentially taking a port from your public IP, which is the IP that your your um, service provider assigns to you, um, and it's the IP of your router essentially, and forwarding one of the ports from those uh, from the router to your Raspberry Pi so that you can use your your Raspberry Pi's um, uh, web interface through the internet and from anywhere around the world. And in, an optional add-on for you to do would be to add a custom domain name to point a public IP. For me, I have it assigned to printer.solenia.me, which is my personal I domain, and that makes it easier for you to not have to type out your full IP address in your web browser every time you want to access it. And now you should be able to access the interface at your IP address. 
But now you've got this whole bunch of cables that just littered around the 3D printer. And well, you want to make it look nice, you don't want it to just be lying there. So now it's time to use your 3D printer to actually do something useful, which is to print this. So this thing actually is, is a mount for the C170 plus a Raspberry Pi, and you know it just it just connects everything really neatly and it looks cool. So so this is step I don't know what. Uh, you set up to print, you configure the name, domain name, you debug the network for like four or five hours because for some reason nothing works. And then you print the case, wait for let's say five, six hours, and you plug in everything, and then it works. I know. I mean you can see the, the, the setup here that I have in my room. <coughs> just on my desk. And finally you got most of the things configured and then your filament runs out. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's about it. Um, before I end, um, so me and my co-founder Ambrose, we actually recently started a, a new startup called Beep and we're looking for advice on, on how to run a startup because we're only you know, 18 years old. So any sort of advice from anyone here who's experienced, just come talk to us or tell us that you, know, you exist and we'll come talk to you. Uh, and also any referrals to investors because we're looking for seed funding. Um, yeah, if, 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 if anyone is interested to talk to us, just come talk to us because we don't really you know, know. Yeah, and we're looking for contacts. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gershon. So, you know, great guy. The secret is right there yes. at the back. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. Okay, so yeah, thank you. That's it. We are done. So much for coming. Thank you for having me. I checked the snow. Um, any any new announcements? Suddenly something coming to mind? Would you like to talk yeah, about? Yeah. Uh, we have company is looking for Android developer for uh, Android system for robot for F&B company. So let me know if you want to do more. It's a paid project, three to six months. Yeah. So let me know if you want more. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, hi, this is Jonathan, and uh, we are from SpaceX. And uh, we are looking for formal engineers and quality engineers. We are located in a uh, street size park. So anybody interested, uh, I said junior.